Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to my live stream. And welcome to the jungle of Costa Rica. I've been in Costa Rica for about a month now. And I'm living on the southern tip of the Nicoya Peninsula, which is one of five blue zones in the world. And the blue zone is defined as a place where, uh, from studies that they've done, people have actually been found to live longer. And um, in theory, better, happier, um, and higher quality lives. And I came to the jungle, to the Nicoya. Hello, Wesel Wellesley. How's it going? I came to the jungle uh, for the first time back in February of this year uh, to do yoga teacher training. Um, wasn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't have called myself a quote-unquote yoga person. <laughs> I like saying that, yoga people, you know. I wasn't a yoga person before I did the yoga teacher training, but when the opportunity came up, it felt right. So I took a leap of faith and I decided to come to the jungle and uh, see what Costa Rica is all about, see what the blue zone is all about, see what life is like in the jungle, and learn some yoga. And so I did. Um, I manifested a very short notice trip. It was about six days from the time when I was invited to come to yoga teacher training to when I actually got on the plane and flew to Costa Rica. And uh, I was here for, let's see, it was a 200 hour training. So I was there for about a month. I was here in Costa Rica for about a month back in February. And then I went back to the East Coast and I spent a couple of months uh, back there and I couldn't stop thinking about the jungle. Um, when I was here back in February, it was dry season and um, I knew that the dry season was coming to an end and uh, Alabama cornfields. <laughs> no, these are, um, I'll have to show you the banana tree here in a minute. The banana trees are the coolest things ever because they're plants. They're not actually trees, they're just huge plants. Uh, but I guarantee you don't have banana trees in Alabama. Uh, and there's nothing quite like a banana tree in my mind. Uh, but I really wanted to see the jungle in the rainy season. And I knew that the, the dry season was coming to an end and the rainy season was started. And I had an open invitation from my friend down here who I'm living with to come to the jungle and to, um, to experience the blue zone for myself. So that's what I decided to do. I decided to spend some time down here. I've been here for about a month now. Um, I came uh, in the middle of May and I'm gonna be here for another week and a half. And then I'm going back to the States um, to, uh, to take care of some business. And then I plan on being back here later this fall um, to do additional retreats. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how my lifestyle has changed since I started studying Neville Goddard because it's a question that comes up a lot. And um, you know, a lot of you know me as, as the voice. A lot of you um, listen to me because I read Neville's audiobooks and his lectures and as I've shared in other live streams, it's um, my goal or my intention to give his words new life, new voice in uh, you know, the 21st century um, on the internet uh, through narrating them thoughtfully. And um, you know, so I, I've, been, I've read a lot of Neville Goddard and I've read a lot of it for you guys and I've, I've studied a lot of my own. But my, my studying of similar topics is certainly not you know, Neville Goddard is certainly not the only person that talks about these things, but in my personal opinion, nobody says it like Neville. And uh, I think that there's something to be said for clarity and something to be said for um, the energy with which uh, he, he says what he says. You know, there's, as I've mentioned in, in other videos that I've done, there's kind of an essential truth to these things. There's the essential truth that we are all imagination that our life is a dream and that we're imagining that all of this is real and that you know we're actually not our bodies we're actually um, you know a fractal of consciousness and like I mean I'm just using my own words to say it but a lot of people will tell you this a lot of teachers will tell you this a lot of you know thought leaders say things like this but they all use their own language and for me I haven't found anybody who says it like Neville and um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really glad to have found him and I, I will say that um, finding him and starting to study him in particular, what his words are, his lectures, his way of talking about these experiences, unlocked a lot of doors for me in my life. And for those of you that are also feeling um, connected 
to the way that Neville says these things. I wanted to talk a little bit about the changes that I've been seeing in my life and uh, kind of bounce them off of you. And, and maybe you hear some things, you know, that, that kind of uh, turn on some lights for you and, and help you understand that it's not just you. Whatever you're experiencing, maybe, you know, maybe we're experiencing similar things as we're studying this. So the thing about, um, about Neville Goddard is he, he really encourages you to take um, the imaginative process of creating your life into your own hands. I'm, uh, I'm spreading lemon eucalyptus essential oil on my arms right now because it's a uh, rainy season and also mosquito season. But luckily this uh, essential oil works really, really well, so it keeps the bugs away. But Neville talks about how to imagine using an active imagination, how to create your life. And he keeps talking. He said over and over again, and, and I've said it over and over again because I've been reading his texts, um, you know, and I, I a lot of times listen to, to my own recording. So I've, I've just had it ingrained into my consciousness. This idea of imagine yourself to already be the person that you desire to be, whatever those qualities are. And I, I just, I feel like that's a blank canvas. And it took a while of me hearing him say that, and it took a while of me reflecting on that and kind of almost meditating in a way on that, on that statement to realize that really that's an open invitation. Saying, you know, imagine yourself to be already the, the person that you wish that you were. Like that's an open invitation. And it took me a while for that to really, um, to really land or, or, or plant, I suppose, um, take root in my own personal garden of my consciousness. But when I started, when it actually started to, I really started to dream into um, this idea of, oh, I, I can create my own identity using my imagination. Uh, I started to notice that my priorities started to change really, really quickly. And it was easy for me to, it became easier and easier as I, as I started to, to dream into this and ask myself the question of if I could be any man, if I, if I, if I could say that I am this man and, 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 and write out you know, a list of attributes, what attributes would I fill in there? Uh, how, what, how do I want to show up? Who do I want to be? What kind of man do I want to be? What kind of life do I want to live? And with that blank canvas and the opportunity to just fill in characteristics, as I started to dream into that and just really imagine, um, you know, what, what characteristics do I want to plug in to that equation of who I am? And I noticed that when I started to do that, my priorities started to change in my life in general. And I was able to dig underneath of the things that I thought I wanted, the things I thought I was going to use imagination for or use the law of attraction for, you know, I, I had um, you know, some ideas about the business that I wanted to create. And I, and I, I still do in a way, but I, I want to be clear that like the priorities have shifted. You know, before it was like, oh, I, I want this, this, and this. And I thought it was because I wanted the things. But dreaming into this, you know, what kind of man do I actually desire to be? I quickly realized that it's not, it's pretty much never the things that someone wants. It's never the things, it's never the trappings. You know, it's, it's, it's the, the, the things or the, the situation or the story about your life, about what you have or about what you've created or what you've done or what you've accomplished or what your successes are. That's all just stories. It's all just stories that you're telling about, about who you are. And really, at the end of the day, it's all a feeling. It's all a feeling. And when I started to realize thanks to Neville being so clear about this and just, you know, having it, like I said, kind of ingrained or, or just like imprinted into my consciousness over and over and over. I started to realize that, you know, thanks to Neville saying this over and over, that it's all just a feeling and that I can create that feeling from any state. So if, if I can learn to control my state of being, then regardless of the so-called story that I'm telling about what's happening in my life and the judgment that I'm casting about whether that's a good thing that's happening in my life or a bad thing that's happening in my life or if my life is the way I want it or if it's my life is the way I don't want it, rather than being caught up on any of those things, I realize that it's just a feeling. It's just a feeling and I can create that feeling completely irregardless, irrespective of the actual conditions of my life. And it's amazing to me because once I started to see that and that, 
And it wasn't just about seeing it because it's, it's one thing to hear someone say this. I mean, we're, we're, we're told, you know, even from our earliest years, even from just being, you know, um, children, you know, nursery rhymes, you know, row, row, row your boat gently down the stream, merrily, 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 life is but a dream, right? Like, we're, we're told these things, or these, all these cliches that we say, you know, you create your own reality, and, you know, a dream is a, a wish that your heart makes, and like all the Disney things, like, we, we've, been, we've been ingrained with truth, Looks like I'm reconnecting my Wi-Fi here. We've been ingrained with truth um, in our own ways, and I don't even know if my live stream is still happening here. Can you guys hear me? Oh, you can. Okay, good. It says reconnecting, but I'm going to let it keep going here. So we've been ingrained with truth in one way or another. Thank you, guys. Um, and we've been told all these things, but it's something, it's, it's one thing to have the seeds planted, and it's something entirely different to actually see those seeds germinate and start to sprout. So for me, in spite of having all of these seeds planted, all these things that I've heard people tell me and you know, all these things that you could just be like, oh, yeah, of course, you're right. You know, and when people say these things like, oh, you create your own reality and like, you know, it's all in your imagination and, you know, you need to dream as big as you can dream. And then that's who you become. What, however people say it, like it's all around us, but it's one thing to just come into contact with it, and it's something else to actually start to apply that wisdom into your life, into my life. So for me, I had to get to the point where it really became clear that I have the ability to shift my state of being in any moment. And then not just become clear that I have the ability, but actually to start to do it. And this is where the lifestyle changes like just really became so clear to me. I, the more I started to think about what kind of man do I want to be, the more I started to think about how do I want to feel day to day? How do I want to feel? You know, the only difference between me living my dream life at some future date, unspecified future date, and me living my dream life now is the feeling, is it not? When you really boil it down, isn't it just the feeling that's the difference? You know, like, you know, you talk about like materialistic things, right? Like having, having um, you know, a house and a relationship and a lot of money and freedom and opportunity. Those are all things that create a very specific feeling. And I'm, I'm thinking it's probably something along the lines of feeling unlimited, feeling like you have opportunity, feeling like you have um, access, right? Access to, to experience things, to, to live you know, your fullest expression. It's all just a feeling, but it's not those things that give you the feeling. They can inspire the feeling, but it's very easy to get confused as to what's actually creating the feeling and really it's you hi there welcome to london wow we are we are a ways away i'm in central america right now it's the jungle we had a rainstorm earlier today an absolute downpour it was amazing i love i love rainy season in the jungle by the way it's beautiful everything is thriving in the jungle anyways uh, but in the rainy season everything just gets even more lush and beautiful which brings me to my next point so you talk about lifestyle changes and from studying neville goddard um, if you're serious about studying this stuff, you can manifest whatever you want. You can literally manifest whatever you want. Look at me. When I started reading Neville Goddard, I was not living in the blue zone of Costa Rica. But it was something that I was able to dream into and create for myself very, very quickly. And now that I'm here, uh, understanding what I've learned from Neville, now I use my imagination to imagine what my perfect day is like. How does my perfect day feel? How, how would it feel if I got to live my perfect day from the minute my eyes open in the morning to the minute they close in the evening? What would my perfect day feel like? And then I can use my imagination to design that experience for myself. Day by day by day by day by day. And I woke up this morning and the first thing I did was deep breathing exercises. 
because as I was dreaming into how I want to feel in my perfect day, I, th- I thought about the feeling, and really the feeling that I love to feel is this feeling of expansiveness, this feeling almost like you're walking on air. It's like this enlightened state. It's an expanded state. It's clear. No, no mental fog. I just feel clear. I feel focused. I feel light. Uh, I feel like I can move my attention at will. Um, you know, I feel kind of like I'm, I'm floating above circumstances and I can see clearly the road in front of me. And usually that's those, 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 con- those ideas that I just described about how I want to feel. I've done enough research to know that those feelings are all associated with certain brainwave states that I can reliably create in my body using tools. And one of those tools happens to be breathing. I'm certainly not the only person to ever have discovered this. There's actually um, so, so many body sciences, including yoga, that talk about uh, the breath and talk about breathing and breathing techniques. Um, it's, it's a very well-known tool of consciousness. But I woke up this morning and I immediately did a series of, of deep breathing um, for probably about 20 minutes uh, that is specifically designed to shift my brainwave state. And that's exactly what I did. Deep, deep breathing, deep concentrated breathing, um, holding my concentration on my third eye, um, doing a visualization technique that I've learned um, just, just to summon that, that state um, and be able to, to dwell in it. And it's amazing. Uh, just, and again, this, this is not something um, that I feel like I would have discovered if I hadn't taken the time to dream into how do I want to feel every day of my life? How do I want to feel? Who do I want to be and how do I want to feel? And who am I when I feel this way? How do I need to feel to be the person that I want to be? There's so many different ways to say it and I feel like each way I say it, there's a little bit of a different energy associated with it. But the bottom line is, my priorities have shifted. And I've gotten to the point now where the most important thing for me is supporting the feeling state, supporting that that state of putting myself into that state of being that I desire to inhabit rather than wishing that I had it, rather than making up stories for why I don't have it, right? Like it's, it's, about, it's about making the here now, making the now here. And I feel like applying the, the Neville technique um, you know, not not just the way he teaches. So he, he teaches, Neville teaches the imagination technique uh, in a lot of different ways. I mean, he has a whole body of content where he talks about his techniques. But a lot of times when he's in his lectures and he's talking about how to create an imagination, he, he basically talks about going to the end of what you want to create and creating that feeling state and then holding it in your body. And he says, you know, you can lay down, flat, you can put yourself into a meditative state, you can do breathing, you can close your eyes, you can plug your ears, whatever it is, to get yourself disconnected from the senses, do a bunch of breaths, say, I am, I am, I am, until you forget that, you know, what you are, and then you decide that you are what you desire to be, you pull that feeling into your body, you know, you, you, do, you really dwell on it and really entrain your brain to hold that feeling, and then that becomes a seed that you've basically planted in your consciousness. And the idea is if you can fall asleep during this process, then you're going to carry that seed deep into your unconscious, your subconscious, your unconscious. The idea being that tomorrow when you wake up, you've now planted this seed and it will impact your day. And you'll start to see this seed sprout and, and bear fruit and, and grow and spread throughout your life. And in my experience, yes, that is absolutely a valid technique for manifesting what you want. When I started using that technique, I would create a story in my mind about um, having the level of success that I desired to have in my life. So what what do I mean when I say level of success? So I'd be like, you know, um, I have, I had, have slash had a couple ideas of how I I envision myself spending these precious days of my life. And um, I would, I would, I would imagine to myself that I'm using it the highest way that I could imagine and then create that feeling of what that might feel like. And what's really interesting is, is that going through that imaginal exercise, that process, I started to realize over time that some of those things that I thought I wanted, I didn't actually want. Some of the things that I thought I wanted to create 
I didn't actually want them. And I, I didn't know that I didn't actually want them until I went through the process of feeling myself into already having them. And that's where this stuff gets really, really powerful because you, basically when you get good at creating a state of being, you can instantaneously basically switch roles and shrug off the current story of your life and step into a new story of your life and feel it as though it's real. And having done that several times, I started to realize that the story I had dreamed up for how I wanted my life to go was based on a series of feelings that I felt that it was important to create. Like I had come here to experience certain feelings and then I made up a story based on my limited experience of the world to that time about how to create those feelings for myself. And then that's the imaginal picture that I used to stimulate the inspiration to, to create the state of being. And then that's the seeds that I'm planting in my life. But having walked through all of that and created the mental pictures and stepped into them, I realized actually my values have shifted and it's actually different things that I want. You know, I, I spent some time, you know, and I've, I've, I've tried to, I've tried to, I've chosen to do it in, in all of the houses of life, right? So, so I go, I go, you know, I, I use the Neville technique to imagine certain things about my relationships. I use the Neville technique to imagine certain things about my business, about, about my uh, daily experience, about adventures that I have, about, you know, fun that I have, about uh, travel that I do, things, things of that nature. And I also use it to do things like imagine my health. So there's the opportunity to use an imaginal picture um, to imagine yourself to be in a state of, of perfect health. Now, I have spent some time doing exactly that. Uh, particularly last year, I spent some time, um, let's see, it was, it was October of 2016. So this is still before I had started my Neville Goddard channel. October 2016, um, I was in Canada and uh, I was on vacation and I fell and I broke my arm at the age of what, 30, 33, I think. Yeah, so kind of not an ideal time in life to, to break an arm. Um, and so it was right about the same time that I was really getting into Neville Goddard. So I started to think, okay, what if I could use uh, the Neville Goddard technique to imagine my arm healed? And, and I took it a step further than that and I actually wanted to imagine myself into perfect health. What would it feel like if I felt as bright and as vibrant as I am capable of feeling? If I had not just good health, but if my body felt like it was thriving, absolutely thriving. And so I spent time, you know, I would, I would stand and, and look at myself in the mirror and I'd look at my body and I would imagine that I'm seeing the body that I want to see, meaning, you know, seeing the uh, muscle definition in areas where I want muscle definition, seeing a healthy glow, you know, seeing, um, you know, um, ageless skin, right? Like, I think that's, that's what most people want is, is ageless, right? Um, or at least a minimum to age with grace. And so I spent some time doing that. And then it's really interesting to see how those seeds then planted. I mean, now I'm living in Costa Rica and I'm eating the closest to the earth that I've ever eaten. My skin looks the best it's ever looked. I am so well hydrated. It's ridiculous how much water I drink in a day and it makes me feel great. Um, I'm eating a lot of raw food. It's not 100% raw right now, but it's a lot of raw food, more raw food than I've ever eaten before. Uh, and, and, it's, and I feel in my body the best I've ever felt. And I look, looking and feeling that, I'm like, wow, like I really have created this for myself. And then thinking back to the times when, you know, I, that's something that I wanted, it was a desire that I had, so I took the time to create it in my imagination to plant that seed and welcome it into my life and then to realize, wow, these, these lifestyle changes all just kind of manifested themselves. You know, I, I, didn't, I didn't spend a whole lot of time thinking about my, life, about my, my health and well-being after going through that process of, of creating it in my imagination. I just created it, I released it, trusting that I would find my perfect, vibrant, thriving health and let it go. And... Hello, Leonardo. Welcome to the live stream. 
So I, I created my, my perfect body, my perfect health, and then I just let it go. And then one thing leads to another, synchronicity after synchronicity, a lot of surrender, a lot of giving up on the story and just you know letting, letting things be and focusing on creating the feeling. And now here I am, my whole lifestyle has changed. I'm now living in the jungle, very close to the earth. I walk barefoot every day for at least 20 minutes, sometimes closer to, sometimes I walk barefoot for hours. Um, it really just kind of depends. You know, I swim in the ocean. Um, every day if I can help it. Sometimes I miss a day, but it's, you know, not, a, not an issue. Uh, and these are all things that I didn't consciously create as part of my imaginal picture, but flowed into my consciousness uh, in fulfillment of what I had put out there and, and asked for. So for those of you that are using the Neville Goddard technique and you're trying to create specific circumstances in your life, you know, if you're trying to, to manifest yourself a, a new car or a new house or I, I hear a lot of people they are trying to manifest themselves a relationship with a specific person. And I just want to go ahead and talk about that for a minute. Neville Goddard has said a lot in his lectures and I can say this because I've read so many of his lectures. He's said a lot in his lecture that it's important, it's important to focus on the feeling rather than a specific person. Focus on the feeling of feeling fully supported and having a relationship that makes you feel, encourages you to feel, supports you in the feeling that you desire to feel about a relationship. If you want, you know, beautiful intimacy and a sense of deep connection, you know, um, focus on those feelings. And if you want to make a specific person a part of that, okay, do it, but don't get attached to the idea of that person being your partner because when you get focused or hung up on a specific detail you're basically telling the universe that you know better than the universe so if i say i'm manifesting a specific person to be my partner just as an example because i've seen people leave comments like this you know i'm 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 married to my specific person okay well that's that's all fine and good but if you're really hung up on that specific person you're basically telling the intelligent design of the universe that you think that you know best and that you think that this is the best that you could ever feel. This relationship is the best that you could ever feel. And basically it's not wise. It's not wise to do that. Because if there's one thing that I've learned, it probably all comes down to this. If there's one thing that I've learned from studying Neville Goddard, it's that you can trust the intelligent design of the universe. You can trust it. On some level, you are the intelligent design of the universe. Well, really on every level. But do you get what I'm saying there? It's, it, you know, there's, there's an infinite spectrum here, and I'm, I'm talking to different parts of your psyche as, as we do these videos. On some level, you are the infinite intelligent design of the universe. But it's also important that your ego understands that you can trust the infinite intelligent design of the universe. So if you're desiring a partner, just, just to hit this point home, because I think this is very important, if you're designing a perfect partner, you can use someone as a placeholder. And maybe that person is the right person for you. And if so, congratulations, that's awesome. But there's also a possibility that the universe has a partner for you that you haven't even dared to dream of yet. There's a possibility that there is someone out there that matches you so well that as long as you're stuck on this specific person that you think that you know better than the universe, that this is the person that you want and you know, I'm, an, I'm a conscious creator, so I'm going to force this person into my dream. You're only robbing yourself when you do that. You're only robbing yourself. Let go. Let go. Let go. Let it go. It goes for other things too, but it, that for some reason, this specific partner thing, it's popped up a couple of times on my videos, and I feel like it's impor important that people understand. You know, I, I read one of the comments that I got, you know, um, about a specific person. I read it to uh, Victoria here, who I'm hosting retreats with. And she said, well, it's not very nice to force someone else into your dream. And I thought, well, that's an interesting way to say it. And there's some truth to that, I feel. I feel on some level when you're, when you're dreaming that it has to be this specific person that you're going to be in a relationship with. Yeah, on some level, you're forcing that other person to be a part of your dream. And that other person is a part of the intelligent design of the universe too. 
So trust, let go and trust, let go and trust, hold on to the feeling, let go of the details. That is the bottom line of what I've learned from Neville Goddard. Hold on to the feeling, let go of the details. If you want to be happy, healthy, and free, hold on to that feeling of happy, healthy, free, unlimited, expansive, whatever that feeling is. If that's what you want, hold on to the feeling. Don't hold on to, oh, well, it means living in this house, driving this car, being married to this person. Please, please. If you're just starting on this journey, if you're just starting on this journey, the first thing you need to do is spend some serious time looking yourself in the mirror. And you can do this literally or figuratively, and I recommend you get space to do it. I can't say this loud enough. Get space. Get space to do this. Come to a retreat. Take a vacation. Take a road trip. Go camping by yourself. Get space. Step out of your life. Get space. And instead of being on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and everything else, Get space. Get space. Look at your life. How does your life feel? How does it feel? Okay. How could it feel? How could your life feel? And it's an unfolding. It's like unwrapping a present. You know, I didn't immediately think, oh, the best way that my life could feel is this, this, and this. Like, it's, it's been, to start with, it feels like this, this, and this. And then I get there, and I'm open, okay, how can this feel even better? And then it's this, this, and this. How can this feel even better? This, this, and this. Until I get into the situation where more often than not, I'm having experiences where I'm like, this is the best I've ever felt. And I know it's not done. I know I haven't hit my peak. I know it's just a cascading. It's like a waterfall. It's just getting, getting more. It's getting deeper. It's getting more beautiful. So part of me wants to warn you guys and say that if you're not ready to reimagine your whole life, you probably shouldn't be studying this stuff. What's the best place or video to start to understand his method or principle for someone new? I'm going to point you to the video that Neville says himself. Neville himself says that um, if there was one video that his whole, if there was one, one thing that he could teach, obviously it wasn't a video at that point, but he said if there was one, one thing he could teach, he thinks this would be it. This is the, this is the one thing that he, he believes that he could teach that would outlast him, that men would talk about for centuries and centuries to come. And it's called The Pruning Shears of Revision. That's also the name of the lecture. And I have recorded it. It's on my channel. I invite you to, to listen to my reading of the Pruning Shears of Revision. The other one I would recommend that you start with is called um, Self Talk. I think it's called Self Talk Creates Reality. And that one I've also narrated and it's on my channel. Um, and both of those are excellent places to start. Um, in terms of, of learning the technique and learning what Neville Goddard talks about. Um, I, will, I will give you um, a little footnote here. I believe this is the most powerful information there is. And, oh, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. He says, I just started listening to that one the other day on your page and I subscribed to your channel. Awesome. Thank you. I do believe that this is the most powerful information there is. And I don't say that lightly. When you learn to control your imagination, you learn to control your stream of reality. You learn to control your timeline. You learn to control your dream. And I don't mean control like a steering wheel and, and, and accelerator and brake pedals so much. That's not really what I mean when I say control the dream. I'm more talking about you can become very, very powerful in terms of what you create. But it's a, uh, to borrow a yoga term, sthira and sukha. So that's structure and flow. So the structure being you get really, really clear about who you're imagining yourself to be. You imagine yourself with the, the highest character traits that you can imagine. You start to dream into uh, a story um, that you're proud 
you're you're proud to be the person that you are, and um, that's that's kind of the, you, know, you create this feeling for your life, this feeling that you desire to embody in your life, and you hold that feeling, and then the the sukha is the flow. So that's the universe filling in the details. So it's like you create the outline of like this is who I this is who I believe myself to be. These are the beliefs that I believe are true, and then based on those beliefs, the universe fills in the details. So it's not like you're 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 writing in all the details. The universe doesn't quite work that way. The universe responds um, to you in a, in a way that's a lot more like a dance, if I can use um, that analogy. The question is, God, is can I focus on healing a certain part of the body? Yeah, you definitely can. You definitely can. Um, and, and I'm not going to tell you that action won't be required. Um, sometimes action is required. But what I found is that Anything that you that you desire to do using this information, this is probably going to be. I've said a couple of really important things in this video. This is probably going to be one of the other really important things that I'm going to say on this video. If you're serious, if you're serious about waking up in the dream, you need to understand this. To do anything, to do anything, you move the energy first. You move the energy first. Because if you try to start by moving the matter and the energy isn't moved, you're defeating yourself. Resistance. You move the energy first. So let me explain what I mean by that, particularly in terms of your question of how do I heal a certain part of my body. So for me, it's, it's my, my arm. Like I said, I was running and I fell and I broke my arm and I've been focusing on, on healing my arm. And in that process, I've discovered yoga and I've discovered breathing and it's deep in my meditation practice. It's actually been one of the greatest blessings that I could have, I never would have asked for, nobody ever asked to break an arm, but it ended up being one of these greatest blessings. But I had to get to the point in my story where I saw it as my greatest blessing. And that part of, part of moving the energy is tuning into the spirit of gratitude and of love. It's part of how you move the energy. So the first thing I would say is if you have something wrong with a specific part of your body, something that feels out of balance, something that feels out of alignment, something that um, is hurt in some way, damaged, uh, there's maybe a trauma there, um, something that's ill or out of alignment. The first thing, the very first thing to do, <laughs> the very first thing to do is to find gratitude for that condition. You, you, that's, the only, that's the only thing you can do really, is find gratitude. That, that's, that's the only way that you're going to tune into the space where you can actually start to move the energies by finding gratitude for it. So for me, like I said, I had to look at it and say, even though breaking my arm at the time when it, when it very first happened, I was like, there's no way this can be a blessing. When it very first happened, I was like, there's no way it can be a blessing. It took me about three days. It took me about three days because I was in pain. I was on medication. I was like, wasn't sure if I was going to need surgery. All these types of things are happening. And for three days, I wasn't in the best place mentally. But on the third day, I woke up and I came out of the nightmare a little bit. And I was like, wait a second. I don't believe that random things like this happen for no reason. I don't believe that. And because my beliefs determine my reality, I'm choosing to believe that me breaking my arm is going to be the best thing that, I've, that has ever happened to me. Now, to some of you, that may seem a little extreme or a little dramatic. But when you're dealing with something in your body, sometimes it helps to be very clear like that and just say, look, I'm going to make this the best thing that's ever happened to me. One way or another, I'm going to use this opportunity to grow. And even if that's what it comes to, even if it comes to being just grateful for the opportunity to grow. So I would start there. I would, I would find gratitude for whatever is happening in my body. Find a state of gratitude. And then once I found the state of gratitude, I would, I would start to build in my mind what my life would look like if that part of my body was healed. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty awesome compliment, I think. <laughs> Most interesting man on YouTube, he said. Okay, I'll take it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that this is, like I said, the most powerful stuff there is. <laughs> and I, <laughs> It's a pretty awesome compliment. Thank you. I, it's not something I expected to hear, so you just definitely just made my day. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I, I do think this is the most powerful stuff there is, and I, I think that it is interesting to use your imagination to change your whole lifestyle. Law of Attraction student for a while, but this seems different and more powerful. Can you speak to the difference? 
I'm glad you see it. I'm so glad you see it. So I also started in the law of attraction areas. I think a lot of people did. I think, I think that's actually pretty common that people start to, like one of the, one of the first couple of alarm clocks that people start to, to respond to is this idea of the law of attraction because there's, there's evidence that it works and there's all these people that talk about it and they use those words, the law of attraction. There's evidence that it works. And so a lot of people will be like, oh, well, if this is working for other people, you know, maybe it'll, maybe it'll work for me. And it's like, I, I feel like the law of attraction is the tip of the iceberg. I feel like it's the first part, the feelings and having the courage to believe what you want already happened. Sure, absolutely. I feel like with the law of attraction, it's, it's the tip of the iceberg. And the first part is, do, do I actually create my own reality? And it's like asking that question, do I actually create my own reality? And so the law of attraction would say, that you know, based on, on what you think about is how your how your life is and your thoughts you know create your reality and you know over time if you have certain patterns of thinking they, they start to create your reality and, and and yes all of that is true but I find maybe this is just me maybe it's true for other people's experience as well I find that a lot of the law of attraction stuff is focused on creating material things not that there's anything wrong with that. But I feel like that's kind of how it's sold. I feel like a lot of law of attraction authors and speakers and writers and people in the industry, they, they sell the dream in a way where it's like, if you follow what I'm telling you, then you know, you'll, have, you'll be able to manifest yourself a million dollars and beautiful mansion. Look, what, look how I did. I had a vision board and I looked at my vision board every day and now I live in, in this mansion and I have you know, 16 cars and and four wives, and no, I'm, I'm kidding, but you, you get the idea, right? Like I feel a lot of it is about material wealth. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I feel like that's the focus of a lot of it. And with the Neville Goddard stuff, um, really diving into the power of imagination, yes, it goes so much deeper. It's the whole rest of the iceberg. It's this idea of starting to realize that you're not actually... <laughs> I was going to say you're not actually a human being, but that sounds crazy. So what I'm actually going to say is it's starting to realize that you're playing a part. You're playing a part. You are the actor. The body is a mask that you wear. And when I start talking like this, it leaves the realm of law of attraction, you know, create material wealth and five houses and six cars and, you know, perfect family and perfect, you know, garage perfect whatever, perfect life, it leaves that realm and enters the realm of self-actualization, self-realization, enlightenment. I don't, I stopped studying, reading about the law of attraction a while ago, but I don't feel like, maybe I just didn't get into it enough, but I don't feel like a lot of that was talking about enlightenment or like waking up and realizing that your consciousness is the one consciousness, the one consciousness individualized. Or like I said earlier, that you are in, in an individualized fractal of consciousness. That's what you are, is a fractal of consciousness. I don't think the law of attraction really gets into that. But when you dive into the, the deep end with Neville Goddard, and you start to realize that you are all imagination, the question that's begged to be asked is, well, what am I if I'm not a human, if I'm not a body, if this is just a mask that I'm wearing, what am I? And this is where Neville actually gives answers. So if you're newer to Neville content, and it seems like several of you are, if you're new, new to Neville content, at the beginning of when he started speaking and teaching, he was all about teaching people how to use the law, which is um, the law of imagination, which is basically using imagination to create specific events in your life. And then later on, as he delved into these topics deeper and went deeper in his own practice and in his own learning and growing and evolution, he started to have mystical experiences that started to wake him up from the dream. A lot of his mystical experiences were based on Bible imagery. Um, he calls it the fourfold version, the full fourfold vision. So later on, um, particularly the stuff that I was reading from later in his life, like um, 1959, I think is when he had the first of his visions. And then he had a couple other in through the 60s up until 1972 when he passed on. And, um, you know, he gets more and more into this idea of like waking up and realizing that you are the one consciousness, um, waking up and realizing that uh, you are God individualized. It goes a little deeper than law of attraction in my mind. A little deeper. So someone had asked me 
Um, so what are my goals now? Now that I've, I've gone through all of this lifestyle changes and uh, my life looks different than I would have thought, but right in line with the feelings that I've consciously been creating, so it works. Um, what are my goals now? Well, basically just going deeper. Basically just going deeper. Um, and following my passion. So um, I, I intend to teach this stuff. And I, I feel like in, in these live streams, in some ways, I am teaching a little bit. But for those of you that don't know, I have a background in teaching. Uh, I, I started out, I, I was, um, my first job out of high school was in the United States Air Force. And the United States Air Force trained me as an intelligence briefer. So from the age of 18, um, I was learning how to present information, um, valuable information to um, decision makers, key, key people. And um, you know, I'd, I'd give intelligence briefings to, to generals, to, to Pentagon officials, to fighter pilots. Um, and it's really how I learned to present information was from the Air Force. And then, ever since then, I only did four years and then I, I got out and went and did other things. But ever since then, everything that I've done has had some level of teaching and training associated with it. And most recently, I've been teaching what I call human technology um, for AARP. So uh, for those of you that aren't in the States or don't know what AARP is, it's a membership organization for people over the age of 50. And um, they have uh, community programs that they do around the country. And I, for the last four years, I've been working with them um, teaching technology. So basically smartphones and tablets to older adults who um, have, feel somewhat isolated by the, the so-called digital divide. So th this idea that there's this whole generation of, of, of humans who are still alive, but have not grown up with technology in quite the same way. So I've been doing workshops teaching uh, older folks to use technology. And now I joke that um, now that I've quit that job and have moved to the jungle for the time being, um, and I'm focusing on, on my retreats business, um, now I teach divine technology, the divine technology of imagination specifically. You know, so the, the human technology is you know, a device you can hold in your hand and, and learn how to operate, but divine technology is built in, and we were all born with it, but sometimes we're not taught how to use it. Sometimes we're pretty much not taught how to use it unless we specifically seek out the information and decide to learn for ourselves. We have to specifically look for the information of how do I use divine technology and then trust that, that it'll, it'll click in and, um, and we'll be able to figure it out. So really, I, I have a passion for teaching. I love it. Um, some of my, my favorite days are days spent teaching. And, um, and so really, you know, you said, what are your goals now? Well, my goals now are to deepen my lifestyle. I've, I've seen a lot of what I've planted come around. You know, like I said, I'm feeling fantastic. I feel like my health is on point. I'm getting stronger every day. I'm exercising a lot. I'm, drinking the most water I've ever drank. Like all of these are like holistic lifestyle goals that I had that I've now created for myself. And, you know, now it's, now it's about creating the opportunity to do what I love in ever bigger and brighter ways. And so the way that I'm going about that is simply getting really, really clear about what my highest excitement is, what makes me feel really good. Uh, and the reason why I chose to go live tonight um, is because I... I knew it was going to make me feel really, really good. I wanted to share some of this. Um, do I look up Alan Watts? Yeah, so Alan Watts, I am familiar with. He, I see him as more of a philosopher. I don't know if he would call himself a philosopher. I don't know if anyone else would call him a philosopher. But compared to Neville, if Neville was a spiritual teacher, I would say that Alan Watts is a little bit more of a philosopher. In fact, there's a, there's a video it's called Whale Fantasia, and it's made by a GoPro, um, and it's on YouTube, Whale Fantasia. And it's these beautiful women swimming with whales. And it's beautifully shot video. And the whole, during the whole video, there's a narration. Now that I've talked about it, I'm going to have to put the link in, in this video. I'll do that when I post this video. But there's this narration by Alan Watts where he talks about life being a dream and how you know, every dream, you can dream 70 years at a time, 75 years of life in a single night. And so if you could dream anything, what would you dream? And, you know, you would start off and you would dream, you know, something where all of your pleasures came true. And then you would slowly get more and more 
um, you more, he said you would more and more outgamble yourself in terms of what you would dream. And then eventually you would dream a dream of a life where you didn't know it was going to happen. And then and you would, you know, you'd wake up from that and be like, wow. And then you go back to sleep and dream one more, you know, another dream. And then that's the dream of your life now. So it's this video, it's called Whale Fantasia, it's by GoPro, and there's a quote by him. Um, it's like a little segment of, of one of his talks. And uh, philosopher, yeah, I would, good. I'm glad you agree with me, Leonardo. Um, where, where it features him saying that, and it's so inspiring. I love it. It's, I think it's on my, my uh, playlist of liked videos. I keep a, a playlist of liked videos on my YouTube channel. I don't know if anybody looks at it. But the videos that I put in there, I try to put in videos from other channels that have helped me in my own growth, and I know it's in there. So yes, M. Watts. I didn't realize that he had passed around the same time. I didn't realize that. Um, he's quite a character. He's quite a character, Alan Watts. Yeah. So where I am today, lifestyle changes. So I guess, I guess my warning to you guys, and really encouragement, because a lot of you I feel like... Um, <laughs> I said it the other night and I'll say it again. Uh, sometimes you have to get so thirsty, so thirsty for the next level of your life that there's literally nothing you're not willing to give up, nothing you're not willing to surrender, nothing you're not willing to do to reach the next level of your life. And if you're that thirsty, I'm so glad that you and I are connected right now in this moment because I've been there. I would say I, I exist there now. On a, on a daily basis. I don't, I don't wake up and do deep breathing to shift my state of consciousness because I'm not thirsty. I do it because I am thirsty. I am thirsty. I'm thirsty for the feeling. I'm thirsty for the connection. And at this point in my life, um, as, I've, as I've mentioned in other videos, I've gotten to the point where I'm just waking, I feel like I wake up a little bit more each day. And, um, and yeah, I, I, still have, I still have dreams within my dream. Of course I do. Um, but I feel like I, I wake up and I get a little bit more lucid each day and it's gotten to the point now where I'm, I'm not even really concerned about my personal goals. Um, I'm, I'm more concerned at this stage of my life about how I can be used as a tool of the universe for whatever the universe would have me do. Like I want to say, oh, you know, to spread light and love or whatever. And like, yeah, okay, that's part of it. But like, I'm not even trying to put any, any restrictions on it. Like I, it, I'm so invested in what's happening around me and what, what's happening in life and what's happening in this part of the storyline. You know, my, <laughs> my high school yearbook quote. Uh, so my high school yearbook, when uh, my senior year, when I was graduating, they asked each member of the graduating class of high school um, to, to share a quote that would be printed in the yearbook um, that was meaningful to them. And the quote that I chose to share next to my picture in the high school yearbook, uh, my senior year graduating high school, said, the greatest purpose of life is to spend it on something that will outlast it. I graduated at 17. I had no idea what I was talking about. Or did I, right? It's obviously something about that quote resonated with me or I wouldn't have selected that as my quote. I would have said something stupid about football and ice cream. I, I don't know. But no, I'm all like philosoph you know, philosophical, like, you know, the pur great purpose of life is to spend on something that will outlast it. Well, on some level, yeah, I, I resonated with that even at a young, tender young age of graduating high school. And now um, I'm 34 now. And so I guess double, double the number of years from when I wrote that. And yeah, that's literally exactly how I see my life. And, and I'm not trying to paint it in, in certain terms of, oh, it you know, needs to be this big or it needs to look like this. No, I actually don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it looks like. What I'm focused on is how it feels. And I, and I trust the universe enough to know, to understand, to trust, to be secure in the understanding that when I'm living my highest purpose, when the universe has me plugged in in the highest and most beautiful way that it can have me plugged in to serve what I'm here to do, to do what I'm here to do, to, to have the impact that I'm here to have the impact, I'm going to feel the best I've ever felt. I believe that that's true. 
I believe that when I'm interested in something, that when I'm excited about something, when something catches my interest, when it lights me up, when it inspires me, that that's a clue that that's in the right direction of how the universe would have me spend my life. To the point where, you know, I was just talking about how I was doing this job with AARP. There's parts of the job that I was like, I love teaching, but there's all of these additional parts of the job that I was not interested in doing at all. And it got to the point where I actually decided I would rather give it up, give up the whole job, rather than saving it just for the parts I like and trust that the universe will give me the opportunity to fill my time more fully, saturate my time, really, with things that bring me joy. To the point where I was willing to walk away from that job, even though it was until now, being a retreat host in Costa Rica, because what could be awesomer than that? Until now, that was the best job I had ever had. The most fulfilling, the most exciting, the best paid. Brenda, congratulations. I'm so excited for you. That's awesome. That's awesome. It takes courage. It takes guts. It takes guts to do that. And, and it took a while for me. I, <laughs> I started quitting my job. I <laughs> started quitting my job seven months before I actually quit my job. It sounds crazy, but it was one of those things where, and this rings true with the Neville stuff. At first, when I decided I wanted to do it, I started to move the matter before I had moved all of the energy. I moved some of the energy, and there's some energy still there, and then I moved some of the matter. So basically, I sent an email saying I was ready to quit my job. I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm ready to quit. Um, I want to go do other things and thanks for the ride and blah, 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 blah. And you guys need to find a replacement for me. And I sent that email before I internally was fully ready to let go. And so what I manifested out of that was a situation where it took them eight months to replace me. It took them eight months to find somebody to replace me in my position. And I went along with it. I went along with it and I continued to work for an additional eight months after I said I wasn't going to anymore. Trust the universe. Leonardo, wow, we got a crew of you guys on here. Wow, I am honored to be talking to you guys right now. I'm so proud of all of you who have taken huge leaps like that. Trust the universe, huge leaps. I am so proud of you. And I just, <laughs> I just want to say congratulations for doing it now because you're at the beginning of the wave. The robots are coming. This is going to sound like the craziest part of this video, but the robots are coming. Seriously, the robots are coming. Society is changing. We're rapidly approaching a time in human history where our technology is going to get rid of jobs that nobody wants to do. And it's going to create a thirst, a thirst for meaning, a thirst for meaning in life that has never be before been tasted by humankind. A thirst for meaning. Because those jobs that nobody wants to do, they'll be done by robots. And now you're going to have millions of people who are going to have the opportunity to do what they love. And the fact that you have the courage to stop what you're doing now, especially if it's, you know, I mean, technology director, you know, like you got benefits, you got a salary, like that's comfortable. And you're taking a risk by not, by, by letting that go. You are, but you're at the beginning of the wave. You're a trendsetter. You're, you're ahead of the curve and you're doing it now. And I congratulate you for doing it now. It's important to do it now. It's important to do it now. And it's important to be a torchbearer. It's important to be a torchbearer for the people who come after you because this, this is literally an evolution of mankind where we're literally evolving to a new level of our species where we have technology that can secure our basic survival to the point where we know we don't have to work for a living. You've got people like Elon Musk talking about universal basic income. You've got governments of the world talking about universal basic income. How much time do I spend daily reimagining my life? How long before you notice results? Those are great questions. I'm going to get back to them in a minute. Um, you may have to remind me. I'm kind of on a tangent here about what's changing about American society and the world, global society, really. You've got all these people, all these governments, all these thought leaders talking about universal basic income because these jobs are going away. And this is not in a fear-based sense. A lot of people are like, oh, the world's changing. Everybody's going to be unemployed. Are you kidding me? There is no way. There is no way that the entrenched powers that be or powers that were, however you want to say that, um, the economic powers of the world are going to let human society suddenly be unemployed. Come on. What we're going to see instead is a thirst for meaning 
and people actually being able to be born on planet Earth and spend their life chasing their dreams, living their passions. We're going to see a new age of artistry that has never before been seen. There's going to be a, a technological renaissance that is going to bring about the opportunity for creators to create in ways never before imagined. The cryptocurrency revolution is underway. We're going to have a new level of transparency in finance. If you haven't gotten a piece of that pie, I encourage you to be a trendsetter in that regard too because it can be your retirement fund. The world is changing and if you're able to see that and make the moves now and do it consciously where you're moving the energy before you're moving the matter and you're getting in alignment with your highest purpose, you're following and acting on your highest excitement, you're plugging in to the, the pattern of the universe, you're trusting the intelligent design, you're, you're acting on, on your inspiration, you're, you're taking steps to feel really, really good every day of your life. You're, you're removing sources of negativity. Someone left a comment that I want to address. He said something about, um, what do I do about you know, reading about things in the news? Don't read the news. Don't read the news until you have evolved emotionally to the point where you understand it means nothing. Jump and the net appears. Precisely. Precisely. Jump and the net appears. <laughs> you could spend a lot of time worrying about whether or not it'll appear. You know, I... Um, my business partner out here, Victoria, she has a five-year-old son and his name is Christian. So I've been spending a lot of time with a five-year-old during the last month that I've been here. And it's really funny. He did something the other day that I want to share with you guys that I think is a perfect analogy. So uh, we were over on the yoga deck and Victoria and I were, were doing our practice and uh, Christian was playing with the blocks, like the little blocks. They're like these little um, wooden uh, compressed blocks that you use to like support different positions of yoga and stuff like that. And there's a bin of like probably 40 of them over there. And he had all these blocks and he was setting them up and he built himself um, a, a series of blocks that he could hop from block to block and then he had to hop over a big stack of blocks. And so he set them all up and um, he told us that it was a challenge. He's like, oh, this is a challenge. And you have to hop from block to block, back and forth, and then hop over a big block and then that's how you complete the challenge and you win. And so you're like, oh, great, like you need to do your own challenge. And he's like, and, you know, because you designed the, the challenge, like show us how to do it. So he starts hopping from block to block and then he gets up to that big block and all of a sudden he's not so sure and he's like, hmm. And then he tries to change the rules, right? At first you have to jump over the block and then he's like, well, I'm going to say that you have to jump to the top of the block and then you can jump down. And we're like, no, like you made the challenge, like you have to do the challenge. And I tell this story because I feel like it's a potent example a lot of times of what we can do in our lives if we're asleep to it. So this idea of we can set up the perfect opportunity to take a leap of faith, to jump over the blocks that we set up for ourselves, and then all of a sudden when we get up to the edge, we're like, oh, I, I don't know, um, maybe I should change the rules and give myself an out. Right? Oh. There's a lot that goes into this, consciously creating your reality. There's a lot that goes into it. Uh, the good news is that it's fun because, like I said, it's like a blank canvas. You literally get to create it the way you want to create it. And again, I, I'll, I'll give you some guidelines, I'll teach you. You know, I'll teach you some guidelines about, about how to do it um, in, a, in a, way that, a way that aligns with the intelligent design of the universe. Because like I said, you, you can be very active and will-driven will with this. You can, oh, I'm, I'm impressing my will into creation and then you know, my life's going to look exactly this way. You can be really rigid like that. Or you can say, oh, these are the feelings that I desire to create for my life and then allow them to show up how the universe is going to bring them to you and understand that in some cases, the universe knows a lot, some cases, in every case, the universe knows a lot better than you, but you, all you can really do is trust that. So I wanted to go back to that question that I saw earlier. How much time do I spend each day imagining my life to be the way that I want it to be? I believe it's important to spend, a, spend time each day doing it. Now, the exact amount of time I spend each day doing it does vary. Um, and it really depends on how I'm feeling in a day. Um, I do have days um, 
where I, I wake up or somehow I'm moving through my day where I'm all of a sudden I become aware that I don't feel good for whatever reason, you know, for whatever reason, right? Like it's not like there's like really a reason, but like, you know, for whatever reason, I'm not tuned in to the state of feeling good. And whenever I become conscious of that, immediately, immediately, space, I take space. Now, I've also manifested a lifestyle where I can do that. So in this case, you know, if I'm, if I'm doing whatever I'm doing here and all of a sudden I'm like, you know, I'm not feeling the way I want to feel. I'll just tune into my, my heart space and I'll be like, well, what would I rather be doing? And a lot of times it's being in nature. So a lot of times I'll just, okay, and I close the laptop or stop doing whatever I'm doing and I go for a walk in the jungle, you know? And, and I use that walk in the jungle to connect to the present moment, do some breathing and create the feeling in my body that I would prefer to be feeling. So it's, it's not just about having a specific routine each day of, you know, each day before I go to bed, I imagine this, you know, I run through this sequence of imaginal pictures in my mind and then I go to sleep. That is part of it, but it can also be literally a moment to moment thing where moment to moment as you're observing your state, your state of being and understanding that's what you are. You are a navigator experiencing different state of beings. And as you start to tune into that and you start to say, oh, this is what this state of being currently feels like then you can consciously become aware of it and say, oh, well, I think it could feel better. Maybe this is how it could feel better. And then you create that feeling in your body. It is important to do it each day. How much time? As much time as you can spend. You know, it's like um, there's, there's two states of being, and, and I'm, I'm working on a course um, that I'm, I'm going to be publishing um, where, I, where I go into a lot more detail of this. You know, I figure a lot of this stuff, um, you know, any of the Neville stuff, like I'm, I'm going to give away. Um, on, on YouTube and then obviously I'm, I'm happy to do these these live streams as well and, and teach whatever I can teach but um, in terms of, of really um, getting in deep to some of the techniques that I've that I've learned I feel like that requires um, focused content so I'm putting together an actual course about some of these things about about how to um, it's not so much about how to because Neville will teach you how to but basically it's, it's about putting it in language that I feel like anybody can resonate with. That's really what I've learned over the years of being a teacher is, is how to say things in a way that that people that it actually lands. It's one thing to hear it and it's one thing to di digest it and I try to say things in a way that makes it digestible. But there's two states of being um, using the language that I've come to use. How important is it to, to write down your desired life to change your consciousness? Um, it really depends on you. <laughs> um, I write a lot. I just it happens to be one of my one of my uh, fluid communications, um, and I'm in the process of writing a book as well, which some of you I'm sure will read someday, um, so you get to see some of my writing. But I spend a lot of time not writing down my desires, but writing from my desires. Uh, so in that case, it kind of looks like writing writing affirmations in a way. And I, I do plan to share some of those writings. I'm, I'm working on a, on a format for, for a book for that. Um, but yeah, it is important to write it down. Um, right, yes. Leonardo says you must feel it. That's the most important thing. That's why I say I write from the state. I get myself into the state and then I talk about who I am from that state. Who am I now that I have felt myself into that state and I've switched states. So now that I am that state, who am I? And I write from that state. And then a lot of times when I find, when I go back and I reread what I wrote, it shifts me back into that state. So it's like a, like a bookmark, placeholder, if you will. But I was talking about how there's two states. There's two states. There's the creator state and the operator state. And I use this analogy in, in this course that I'm, that I'm teaching. I've recorded a couple of videos for it already. I use this analogy of using a programming console um, or like a cheat code console. I don't know if you've ever played those, those video games where you can hit a special character and it pulls down a little console and you can type in like a cheat code to the back end of the, of the game and you can give yourself unlimited ammo or unlimited money or whatever it is. Um, I call that the creator state and I, I use that as an analogy for what you can do when you go into a meditative state. You can access the creator state and then from there you can imagine your life to be the way that you desire it to be. And then the second state is the operator state and that's where you plug into the present moment rather than creating something in imagination kind of being up here. You plug back into your senses and you're living from your senses and you're living in the present moment and you're connected and you're grounded because there needs to be a balance between the two states. If you live 100% in imagine, well, all of your life is in imagination, but if you live 100% of your life in the creator state, it's a little unbalanced. 
it's important to not just create what you want, but also to enjoy what you've created. So that's why I kind of showed the difference between the creator state and the operator state. And you can learn to move back, back and forth through them, but there's skills associated with both of these. Memories from the future that is all about this feeling state. That sounds good. That sounds really good. Memories from the future. I like that. I hope you'll share it when it's done. Let us know where we can, where we can get access to it. That sounds wonderful. Yes. Um, appreciate you guys. Uh, thank you for your questions. Um, it's really cool to me to see how many of you are interested in doing these things um, like I am. I don't know how many of you there are. It's hard for me to say. I've been, you know, I've been creating um, YouTube content for about a year now. And um, mm -hmm. so someone just said, focusing on your breath and feeling a thrilling feeling. There's a lot to be said for the feeling of, of thrill, for the feeling of thrill. And, and thrill, the word thrill, when I think of the word thrill, I think of this emotional reaction. It's like a feeling in my chest, really. And uh, there's a lot to be said for that. It's part of the feeling state. Um, and, and when you really get into that emotional state, that's really what helps the, the seed that you're planting in your imagination germinate. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, I, I really don't know how many of you there are out there that are interested in creating your life consciously in this way. There's, there's, so, there's so many different... <laughs> it's an infinite spectrum of ways to talk about life and how to create life and how to live life and lifestyle and this and that and everything else. So it's always amazing to me when I find a group of people that, that resonate with me on a, on a deep level, that I resonate with on a deep level, um, of people who, um, yeah, they're on, on a similar path. And it's encouraging to me um, to see it. And I hope that I'm encouraging to you guys. Um, it's, it's a little wild to think, you know, where I was when I first started posting videos a year ago to where I am now. I mean, it certainly wasn't sitting in the jungle, you know, three minutes from the ocean and living the lifestyle I'm living now. It's, it's pretty amazing. It just, I guess it's just a testament to the power. Someone asked, how long does it take? Well, I started studying Neville Goddard a year and a half ago. And in that time, my whole life has changed completely, top to bottom, front to back. So I've also, I have also really gotten clear that it's the most powerful knowledge there is and I feel like that's a key part of it too if if you don't fully believe that it's real or you're not ready to fully wake up and you want to keep hitting that alarm clock the snooze button on the alarm clock maybe it'll take you longer you can spend a lot of time you can spend years believing that life is something other than it is believing that that life is random or that it's just you know something that happens to you I don't know it's there's so many different ways to look at it but I'm really thrilled I'm thrilled to have found a group of people who uh, enjoy this as much as I do. So um, one more thing I wanted to say, and then I'm seeing that I'm already over an hour. I just love talking to you guys so much. It just, it just flows. Um, love when you repeat the importance parts of the books and lectures. Thank you, Leonardo. I appreciate that. Um, someone wrote in a comment, they said that when I do that, it's less like I'm reading and more like I'm printing upon your consciousness. And I just thought that was the coolest way to say it because when I do it, it's funny, when I first started reading these books, I didn't, I didn't like have this mental conversation with myself where I was like, how can I read these books in a way that will imprint it on your consciousness? That's not the conversation that I had. Like, that's not, that's not what I was trying to do. I was just reading authentically like that's all i can really say i was reading from a space of authenticity and i was feeling the words and sometimes some of these things some of these these things that he says i feel it so strongly in my body i can't help but repeat it pause and repeat it it bears repeating it's so important and yes it feels like i'm printing it not just on your consciousness but on my own consciousness and i also really enjoy the ones where he says i am a lot and i don't know if you've noticed that but when I say I am, I am and I'm reading, I really feel it in my chest. I am. I am. I am. I really get into it. It's awesome. I love, I love being able to give all these affirmations while I'm reading a book for all of you YouTube people. 
So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. So how long does it take? I don't know. For me, a year and a half. I've been studying this stuff my whole life, but in earnest. Like I really started to wake up. I really started to wake up, like really started to wake up uh, in 2014. Um, that's when I started to realize that life was not about me. <laughs> that's the best joke there is. Oh, man. I started to realize life wasn't about me in 2014. Up until that point, I had all these stories about how, you know, I, I wanted to be this, and I wanted to be that, and I wanted my life to look this way, and had all these ideas about how it all work out. And then in 2014, I started to realize it's actually not about me at all. Oh, what was the comment I just saw here? Best analogy is believing we are in a video game and we are the main avatar and that everything else are subroutines and we can change the program and manifest our life. I love that analogy. I love, I love the video game analogy. Um, it's like a video game. It's like a lucid dream. There's, there's a lot of analogies to use, but I really like the video game analogy in particular, um, particularly when, when it makes me feel fearless. Because if it's a video game, like... I mean, you can die in a video game, but like you just kind of restart or pick up where you left off. And everything that I've learned, both through Revelation personally and from listening to other people who seem to know about these things, uh, it really seems like life is the same way. Um, at least until, until you wake up to the point where you're woken up, um, you continue to dream. And you dream from one life to the next. Sarah says, do you know anything about Neville's teacher, Abdullah? I'd love to find out more about him. Uh, it's interesting that you ask that because I've had several people ask me about Abdullah. So the coolest thing I can tell you about Abdullah is that when Neville met Abdullah, I remember this from a, um, from a lecture, maybe you've, I don't remember which one, sorry. Um, but I remember the story that when Neville met Abdullah, Abdullah said, um, you're, you're, you're late, something about you're four months late or something like that. And Neville was like, what are you talking about? Like, I, didn't even, I don't even know you. And he's like, um, yes, we absolutely do know each other. And you and I were teachers 2,000 years ago in ancient China. And we agreed to come back at this time in human history and to reconnect. But you agreed that you were going to forget me. And I agreed that I was going to remember you. And then this was going to happen. So I think Abdullah really is... is who taught Neville a lot about the Kabbalah. And the Kabbalah is a body of mystical knowledge that, um, that again, Neville's certainly the only person to talk about life being all imagination. And there's a whole bunch of, of sacred bodies of knowledge um, that, that talk about this and have codified it in various ways, different structures, different, you know, there's like the Kabbalistic tree of life that like maps out who we are in terms of one consciousness and then the different states, all sorts of stuff like that. And I feel like, I feel like Neville uh, learned a, a lot from Abdullah. Um, as far as where to go to find out more about Abdullah, I haven't really felt um, the inspiration to look him up, but I know that a lot of people on my channel have left comments about him. I know that uh, several people feel like he's an important piece of the Neville story. I, I personally, I think that, yeah, he's one of Neville's teacher. Um, do, you really, do you think he really remembered a past life? <laughs> Have you ever remembered a past life? So that's an interesting question because you could ask the same thing of me. Have I ever remembered a past life? And I feel like there's times when I have, but it's like something I tune into and not something that's always present with me. Of course, that's not true, but you know what I mean? You know what I mean when I say that? I'm not always tuned into it, but I feel like it's there and there's been times when I've tuned into past lives. I've also hopped dimensions before in that space between wake and sleep? Yes, I think when I was a child. Yes, precisely, when you were a child. Yes. <laughs> the USA maintained its super status with imagination. Yes! Uh, someone left a comment in one of my videos that said, this is, this is what marketing is all about too. And he's right, he's absolutely right. Also, I'm interested to go to Costa Rica for a long weekend. Well, wow, it's a long trip for a long weekend. Read the books with your comments. Cool. All right. So, yes, um, that's something that's been coming through for a while. Um, I really enjoy reading Neville, but I also enjoy interpreting Neville. And it seems like you guys enjoy it as well. So, 
Ooh, Brenda. I dreamed I was a pirate and was stabbed with a sword. It was a horrible dream. Hola, Pedro. Got a jungle dog just came to visit me and say hello. Um, yeah, past lives, dimensions. Life is far more magical than um, most people talk about. But I'm glad I could talk about it with you guys. You guys are cool. Uh, I'm, I'm glad that we can have these conversations. And, um, you know, I, I hope that... that uh, I hope that this is this is valuable to you. Um, and what I was talking about was giving interpretations. So, the the reading and doing the commentary, um, that's something I intend to do more when I get back to the states. So I'm here in Costa Rica for another week and a half, ah, oh, just making the most of it, swimming in the ocean and doing yoga and eating fruit, uh, and then I'm going back to the northeastern United States, um, to Massachusetts. And it's summertime there, and it's probably my favorite time of year in Massachusetts, spring and, and summer, early summer, midsummer. Um, so I'm going to spend a couple weeks there, and then I'll be back out here to host another retreat. That's the plan right now. Um, as far as these retreats go, um, Victoria and I have been talking about them, and um, we are going to do a series of them here in Costa Rica. But what I've been hearing from a lot of you guys is that it would be a good idea to bring them to the States as well for the ease of travel, uh, for the reduced amount of time. Uh, maybe a weekend workshop, that type of thing. So we're actually talking about Sedona, Arizona. I don't know if that rings a bell for anybody, but we're actually talking about um, possibly doing a retreat in Sedona, Arizona later this summer, or early fall. I have not been to Sedona yet. Victoria has. And um, I was looking at potential retreat locations in Sedona, and it looks totally looks like something I could dream into reality. So look out, you guys. Opportunities coming. All right, so, <laughs> uh, wow, covered a lot of ground in, in this video. Talked a lot about the Neville life, Lifestyle. I'm glad I got to answer some questions. Sometimes I get on these live streams and I feel like the channel just opens and I'm just speaking what needs to be spoken and I don't always get a chance to read your comments and respond to them. So I'm glad that I got to respond to a couple comments today. Um, I gave out some ideas of, of videos of where to start if you're just getting started with Neville Goddard. And then also encourage you to uh, keep a lookout for um, my courses, which I'll be offering soon as well. Those are coming. More commentary videos will be coming as well. Pedro says he fell asleep listening to the power of awareness. So I have had very intense dreams from falling asleep listening to Neville Goddard. The Book of Thomas? I'm not familiar with the Book of Thomas. I'll have to look it up. Falling asleep to Neville Goddard, um, either his lectures or even my own, my own voice readings. I guess what I'm saying is it's not just because it's my own voice, because that's trippy too, but um, falling asleep to them. If this, this is, in my opinion, the most powerful truth there is. So the fact that you're drifting from a conscious state into your subconscious state while carrying that stream of truth deeply, ooh, out of some powerful stuff. Now, for those of you that are not YouTube Red subscribers or live overseas where you can't get YouTube Red, I, based on a request that I had from a subscriber, I've decided to upload ad-free MP3 versions of my audiobooks. I have three up right now. <clears throat> I did The Game of Life on How to Play It, your Faith is Your Fortune, and The Power of Awareness. Those are the three that I have right now, but I have to make the audio versions of the rest of them. And they're MP3s that you can download and listen to with your phone on airplane mode while you sleep. No ads, no, no sudden jar, you know, waking up. It's weird falling asleep listening to videos with ads. So if you're not YouTube Red and the ads are annoying to you, uh, this is an opportunity for you to support my work and purchase an MP3 ad-free audio version. And also, I'll talk more about this in, in my lifestyle videos coming up in the future, but uh, for those of you that don't know, it's important not to sleep next to your cell phone with it on. So I know I had done that for years, and then I started reading the research, and I started to realize it's not actually what I want to do. So in part of my bit of, of creating the happiest, healthiest, most thriving lifestyle that I can create, um, I'm very serious about putting my phone on airplane mode um, when I sleep at night, and a lot of times I don't even have it in the room with me and it's still on airplane mode after, after I go to bed. I, I just make sure I turn it off so it's not sitting there creating fields. 
Um, so I want to give you guys the opportunity to listen to my stuff offline as well, so you're not sitting there, you know, all night long with Wi-Fi and, and cellular stuff happening around your head. So um, the way that you can do that is you can download the book, you can put it on on repeat, and you can just literally just sleep with it on throughout the night, ad free, and uh, that's a very powerful way to inculcate it. It's a new word, inculcate it. It's like inscribe it deep into your consciousness, deep into your consciousness. Okay, I feel like I could talk to you guys forever, and I probably will some other time. <laughs> but for right now, thank you so much for watching. It's encouraging to me. Thank you for your likes. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your shares. Uh, thank you for your engagement. Um, makes it a lot of fun for me to run this channel. Uh, the links to download the books are on the actual YouTube books. Um, I, I sign up for a plan with payloads. So you can purchase with PayPal through payloads and it will download the, the file straight to your phone. So I have those three books, Your Faith is Your Fortune, The Game of Life and How to Play It, and The Power of Awareness. Those three books are available for sale right now. You can download them to your phone. Um, and the links to download them, the store links for the, for the payloads is right there on the video. So hopefully that's helpful. Thank you guys. I am going to uh, let you all go here from the jungle, signing off from the blue zone of Costa Rica. Imagine wisely, my friends. <laughs>